Good morning, everybody. You know, you guys are really calm for a group that has played a part of history today. Never before has CNBC and CNBC Squawk Box broadcast live from the city of Atlanta, and you just sitting there like it's no big deal. The world <laughs> saw us today. The world. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. We have two of my uh, heroes uh, here with me. Uh, before we get and turn the program almost over to involuntarily to Ambassador Andrew Young. <laughs> uh, before we <laughs> do what you got to do, because I want to take it. Okay. <laughs> before, before we, before we, if I got I to say everything I have to say in one continuous sentence. Otherwise, uh, he will, he will take it and run with it. Uh, so, uh, David Abney is, um, I gotta think about this before I say it. He's another one of these rich white oh, no, boys. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with a whole lot of inherited wealth. Oh, yeah. Grew, yeah, yeah. grew up with a silver spoon oh, in his yeah. mouth. You know, yeah, got yeah, it yeah. made from birth. Yeah, he's definitely messing in with In fact, him. he had a trust fund before he was even conceived. Oh, yeah, that's right. And they're so, gonna come and tell us how to run. <laughs> That's right. I mean, we, we, he's, he's, we, 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 we for, poor folk here, we for real. <laughs> <laughs> and he runs the 41st, number 41 of the Fortune 500 companies and all of these things. And he's always asking the question, uh, you go, you what said can Brown do for you? You said you were going to wait and tell us. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> okay. He's let me do the introduction. Okay. Can I at least do an introduction? That, I, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I, I, I think I got hello out of my mouth. You, you know you're in the middle of this. I, I just got a hello out of my mouth. It was a hello, right? Okay. Can, can I? Can I? <laughs> so... <laughs> Ambassador Andrew and my sister's like, oh my God. <laughs> David Abney is about the exact opposite of what Ambassador Young was playing with you, what he just described. He was a let truck loader. It. Let him tell it. Let, let me tell Can I do my own introduction? <laughs> Will you let me do my own introduction? No. No. <laughs> David, I mean, you, let me you, finish. You were bragging on everybody that came up here. I, so, and this guy is for real, and I want, well, well, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, one, one thing you know already, we both love David Abbott. <laughs> so the, here's the easy part. Uh, he runs a company with 500,000 employees. Um, and he is, the, he is one of the, uh, depending on how you calculate it, but it, it's the third largest employer in the United States. He's uh, the seventh largest private employer in the world, uh, and most of these employees look like the people who are in uh, this form. They look like America, they look like the world, they come from modest means and they're able to work their way up from dr uh, drivers and from the dock and so on and so forth. And David relates to that very well because David uh, comes uh, from humble beginnings himself. I'm not gonna tell his whole story, but he was, um, uh, he worked, uh, at the, was it on the docks? Yes. He was a dock worker. Uh, and so I don't want any in here uh, to believe uh, that somehow the American dream uh, is, uh, is out of your reach, that somehow you can't go from the floor uh, to the ceiling, that you cannot break that glass ceiling and redefine it yourself. You just had a lady out here, uh, Kat Cole, who was a waitress, ended up becoming executive vice president of the company she was waitress for, and You're now she runs the whole story. thing. And now you've got David Abney, who was a dock worker, who is now CEO and chairman globally of the seventh largest employer in the world, and he has also adopted Hope Inside the Workplace for UPS workers inside of UPS. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah. And because of UPS, and David's leadership and also our friend Ed Bash's leadership, last night we were pr proud to announce that AT&T has now decided they want Hope Inside the Workplace too. Good deal. So, ladies and gentlemen, my hero, Ambassador Andrew no, Young. Th this is my hero here. <laughs> I tell you what, I went to his meet board meeting, uh, the top 200, 
And I thought I was in an NAACP meeting. Uh. <laughs> but, <laughs> when we went to the, um, you know, there used to be a time when, when, when all the women would come to Atlanta to, to try to fly and find doctors and lawyers to marry. Mm. And then all of a sudden, all of these beautiful women started coming up with these guys walking around with short pants on and driving brown trucks. <laughs> and I said, what the hell is going on? He said, they got stock options. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he took, he, I mean, this company has pr probably produced more millionaires of color of any company in Atlanta. Oh, thank you for that. But I'm wondering why a rich boy like him uh, from Massachusetts and New Hampshire, <laughs> uh, scholar, I mean, endowed chair at Harvard, where uh, you come from? I came from a little town in Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> so you were close anyway. <laughs> but, uh, What's, what town was that? That was uh, Greenwood, Mississippi. And uh, uh, I was there, I probably lived there about 10 or 12 years, very small town. And at the time, and Ambassador Young and I have talked about this uh, a lot over the years, uh, very sheltered world. In fact, the first time that I was in any kind of integrated environment in my life was when I went to work for UPS. And uh, prior to that, I had been told my entire lifetime that uh, separate but equal. And, uh, and so you don't know any better with, when you're a kid, right? And it wasn't until you got older that you realized the separate part was about as true as it could have possibly been. But the but equal part was the biggest lie that I had ever been told. And, uh, and it wasn't like that just in this town. But, you know, it was like that throughout the South. And uh, Ambassador Young and I have talked about it. And then I went to work for UPS. And what I found out is when you have all these packages coming towards you and you're loading, then you don't care if the person next to you, what religion they are, what gender they are, what race they are, or anything else, you learn to work together because we all have the same mission. And you learn that you're a whole lot more similar than you ever are different. And I think it was, and I, I talk about, I got my bachelor's degree at Delta State University, a little school in Cleveland, Mississippi. But I got my honorary master's in diversity and inclusion from UPS because it was just the belief of the company. Cleveland, Mississippi is where a fellow by the name of Amzie Moore was, and he was the NAACP guy that really organized the revelations around Emmett Till. And um, he was one of these fearless guys that worked at the post office. And um, Diane Bevel and James Bevel and the SNCC uh, office in Mississippi was at his home. And Delta State's right down the road, and you're not far from Philadelphia, Mississippi. Not. Uh, and, um, but Greenwood was the liberal Mississippi town. Uh, Hot in Carter, is that right? Yes, that was actually Greenville, Greenville. which is one okay. hour over. But yes, it absolutely was a different city uh, in beliefs and well, actions. Know, you told a story that I, where did you stay when you were in school? At, uh, well, I was at Delta State, and uh, it's a small school. And I don't know if this is where Ambassador is going, but this is one of these things that, uh, that has, the story has grown way past the actual truth. And, uh, <laughs> And I've just watched this story as it uh, grows every year. But uh, I was working at nights for UPS, and then we'd get together for our friends, and, uh, and we had this rule, you couldn't start studying until midnight. And then we would start, we'd stay up real late. Then we'd have to get up 
and uh, go to class. And then after taking a couple of these classes, I would go to the student union building upstairs, take my shoes off, and I'd sleep on the couch in this union building. So the way that story has built over the years is that I was working for UPS, didn't have a place to stay, so I slept at the student union building during the daytime. And uh, that wasn't quite the way it really happened. My parents would tell you otherwise, but, uh, but it's just one of those things that continues to, to come back. Well, he did it. Yeah. <laughs> He's the one spreading it. Well, I, I spread it because... <laughs> Because it's probably more true uh, than he will admit, because he's humble on top of that. But the other thing, which is not a rumor, when we were bidding for the Olympics and people said it was going to cost the city money, I said, no, um, if we win the Olympics, we will attract more business yeah. to this city than anybody can imagine. And the day we, it was announced in Tokyo that we won the Olympics, uh, Oz Nelson uh, announced that UPS was moving its entire operation to wow. Atlanta. That's right. And so they came here, and the first year they were here, they led all of the companies in the city in giving to the United Way. Yes. And for a company to... You know, to come to town as a stranger and move to the top of the pile uh, in community involvement. That's a direct impact on philanthropy, Ambassador Young. I hadn't thought about that. I mean, that corporate move literally uh, uh, topped off the coffers of the philanthropy, which then allows them to do... But it wasn't philanthropy. Those, those jobs you talked about? Yeah. How many were there? F uh, 500,000. Okay. Now, I knew Oz Nelson, who's was I thought was a saint, uh, and I still do. But you heard of the Annie Casey Foundation? Is that that's right? That, that's where you all how you all give away your money. It's one a, of the ways. It is one of the ways. It's also the UPS a, Foundation. That's the, the right. president is actually here, Ed Martinez. Yeah, Ed Martinez, where are you? Let's. He's in the back. Okay, he's, he's in, in the, the back, back of the bus. All right. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Ambassador's talking about the Annie Casey Foundation, and the Annie Casey Foundation, and a lot of people in this room will be familiar, really focused on underprivileged children and making sure that they, uh, from an educational standpoint and from a foster home standpoint and trying to keep families together and trying to keep troubled uh, kids from entering the prison system, finding alternatives to that. Annie Casey was the mother of the founder of UPS, Jim Casey. And uh, Jim started UPS when he was 19 years old. He borrowed $100, had one bicycle, and started a bicycle messenger company. And he was the CEO for 55 years. And, uh, and he's the one that I would give credit that really started us off with our corporate involvement. But then Oz Nelson, I guess it's four CEOs removed from me. And Oz Nelson, I agree with you, Ambassador, he is a saint. He's still very involved in the Atlanta community. And he really was a role model for me. So. And, and that whole business of stock options? How did, how did the truck drivers get to be millionaires? You know, well, I don't know that I've seen any statistics that, uh, that show how many of our truck drivers are, are millionaires, but I can tell you that when they were eligible to uh, buy stock, those that did, and, uh, and we're going back to, to when we were private and when we first became public, certainly have benefited from that. But uh, so, it is something that we are very proud of. Even today, as a public company, there's 160,000 either current or retired employees of UPS that are still shareholders of our company. And so wow. I meet with our retirees just as if they're an institutional investor because that's how much of our shareholdings that they have. So 170,000? 160,000. 160,000. And those yeah. people are they're, they're still well, going I like, I, like to, I, like to, I like us to know 
how capitalism has, is working for poor people. And, you know, helping them to become rich people. <laughs> and, um, well, if, I would say if you're starting out and you had an offer to, offer to drive a truck for UPS and uh, opportunity to pay for law school, your chances are, come, are better coming out working for UPS as a truck driver, starting out, or dock worker, and investing and being involved in a company that you work for, than um, going to law school and putting on a shirt and tie. Well, if you started out as a lawyer, went to law school, you, you started out as a lawyer 30 years ago, 30 years later, you'd be a lawyer. If you went to UPS and started as a dock worker 30 years ago, you end up as CEO. <laughs> No, but that, that, and, and that is possible in more companies in this city than we realize. So is it, question, Ambassador Young and, and David, is it possible that, th that this up from nothing company, UPS, this up from nothing city, Ambassador Young, that you and uh, so many others helped to innovate, that is now this juggernaut in the world, both company, the company and the city, is this the American story? Is this the global story that needs, in many ways, to be modeled after the Atlanta story? Is 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 it is it coincidental that Atlanta is the only international in the South, or uh, and that UPS is headquartered here and Delta and so on and so forth? Or is it intentional, and is it is, is are these things intertwined? Well, you're stumped. No, I'm stunned because I was thinking something else. I was thinking... <laughs> no, I was thinking, reminding you, uh, I mean, he just passed this year, and he was a close friend of mine, but another poor boy that started out selling newspapers in this neighborhood and who was rejected at Georgia Tech High School uh, because he was a poor boy from the wrong side of town. Uh, ended up joining the army and uh, military and qualifying for the Naval Academy. They didn't have a space, so that's how he got into Georgia Tech. Uh, and um, everybody said that this kind of hotel wouldn't work. Mm. And but John Portman, the architect of this uh, hotel, and Herman Russell, who was the largest one of the largest contractors in, in, Amer in the South uh, were both poor boys who used to argue about who was the poorest <laughs> and who came up the hardest. And, and they were, the way they tested it was, and Charlie Loudermill, uh, who ran Air and Rents, um, who was the last one the, to, get, who, to get indoor plumbing? Mm. And all of them got indoor plumbing in their homes after indoor plumbing was in the housing projects. Mm. And I'm, I'm saying that, that instead of envying, uh, look at the opportunities. And Arthur Blank, who owns the stadium now, uh, came here in 1980, broke, he says. Mm. And um, H, I mean, Home Depot, like uh, UPS, is almost made in that ladder. So you are making the case, really, that this, that, because you've actually told, you actually educated me on this, so I'm just re recounting that there are other cities, I'm not gonna pick, on, pick a name now for this audience, but there are other cities that could have been Atlanta. They could have had the airport, they could have had UPS, they could have had these headquarters, but they argued over race, and they argued over things that divided us, where we argued over money, and how to, and how to figure out how to, how to parcel it out. So the color wasn't white, black, red, brown, or yellow, it was green. And, and that union, that unity, where people, blacks and whites, ultimately did sit at the same table, David, and negotiate oh. about the opportunity and prosperity. I'm thinking about the Olympics in particular. That's right. 
That energy, I think, attracted, no different than America attracted, America attracts people who want freedom, that energy, I think, attracted certain leaders to Atlanta. And that environment, I think, boosts GDP. It continues to this day. Is that a fair statement? Absolutely, I believe that's the case. I would like to say that, uh, that I do believe that the biggest reason that Atlanta is an international city is because of the person that's sitting to our left. I mean, there is no doubt about that. And in uh, 1991, when we came to Atlanta, it was about that time, and uh, uh, it was the right decision for us then, and it's certainly still the right decision today. And when I talk to people uh, about joining our company, especially people that live outside the South, the first thing they will often say is, I don't know if I can live in the South. And uh, they've you know, heard all the different things that they've heard. And I tell them that if you move to Atlanta, you're really not living in the South. You're living in an international city. Now, you don't have to get too far outside of Atlanta to where you can, can get in the South, right? But I mean, Atlanta is just a... <laughs> Atlanta is a very metropolitan city that is very internationally oriented, and uh, the Olympics had a lot to do with that, but it's also been uh, some strong leadership along the way. Yeah. And I'd just like to give one more comment about this uh, American dream and can you still do it. Uh, we hire at UPS every year for Christmas 100,000 employees. And they are wow. lock, uh, dock <laughs> workers like I was, loading trucks, or they deliver packages. <clears throat> we also wind up, though, a third of our permanent full-time employees started out as these seasonal employees. And so we give people a chance for promotion from within. We provide uh, tuition assistance. We really work with them. We give them uh, additional responsibilities. And any of them can step up and be one of the leaders of our company. And that's the message that I give. And the latest recent example is the second largest hub facility we have in our network. We put near the Charlie Brown Airport just recently. We hired 3,000 people most of which from the neighborhoods in the surrounding area. The that's air Bankhead. That's right. And uh, that's so, where TI comes from. Yeah. So areas that really haven't seen a lot of economic opportunity, and people question, would you be able to get the employees, the, the employees that have the abilities to, to run your operation? And the answer has been 100% yes. We couldn't be more pleased. But it was one of those public-private partnerships that uh, UPS working together with NGOs and the government, no different than the partnership that we have uh, with John and Operation Hope. UPS is very focused on bringing emergency relief to areas that yeah. get hit with a crisis. Yeah. Operation Hope is very focused on how to help them, those people get through the financial crisis. And we have just found a bond where we work together and we make a difference in the world. And I want to thank you very much for thank your you. cooperation. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. He just stuck his tongue out at me. No, I'm just... Uh... <laughs> I, I was thinking how significant it is that you move that area into what statistically would be one of the high crime areas. If you're looking at the zip codes, yeah. that would be a zip code with most of the social problems, and your answer to it is to put 3,000 some odd jobs there. That's right. We did that down with the Lakewood Amphitheater. Yeah. Also. And that was when I was mayor and nobody wanted to go down there. We put the Music Corporation of America, built that Lakewood Amphitheater. The first thing we did, the people on my staff, they went out and anybody that had some military training of, you know, ROTC or something, and they formed them 
into a law enforcement for the community. And they formed their own security company that they joint ventured with a national security company. Then we took women who were on welfare uh, and put them in charge of the hot dog stands and the popcorn stands and joint ventured them with a national concession company, but they were 51% owner of that uh, vendor. Uh, we didn't know what to do with the old men, so we gave them the parking lot. Uh, and um, this is a totally black area, and then there were some guys that were left, and we taught them how to set up a T-shirt printing uh, shop for a, a business for the entertaining acts that come in there. They did so well that they did work for the Olympics and got contracts with the inter international community to work down there. And um, everybody in that neighborhood was a part of that. We don't, haven't had a car stolen down there. This is since 1989. We haven't had a gang fight. You know, it, I mean, it completely stopped crime. Yeah. So. Uh, Mr. Abney has and to now go. Now the property values are going and sky high. Uh, the only thing that keeps it from going higher is the airport owns all the uh, property nearby. So Dave, Mr. Abney has to, to, to uh, unfortunately, has to leave us. Uh, but I want to thank you uh, for being here with us, for taking time out of your schedule. Ambassador Young, thank you so much for, uh, I joined David uh, in thanking you for helping to make Atlanta into the only international city in the South. Uh, and thank you for you coming here and leaning in and doing things like that investment of, 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 of jobs in an underserved areas, which, which changes everything. Uh, it changes communities, changes lives, changes GDP, brings more prosperity, as Ambassador Young just, the story he just told. You think you want to say in conclusion, sir? No, I'm just honored uh, to be here, honored to be a part of, uh, of really wanting to make a difference in this world. And it starts one person at a time. Last comment was when I first became CEO, it was at a Points of Light uh, convention here in Atlanta. Uh, I made the, uh, it was kind of a bold proclamation at the time, but it turned out to, to work out well, that by the year 2020, the UPSers would volunteer 20 million hours of service to needy organizations throughout the world. It is now 2019, and we will, we're certainly well on path. We will exceed that goal. And it's not about what I did. It's about those 500,000 UPSers that want to make a difference in their city and uh, throughout the world. And that's the kind of company we are. But that also encourages people to be loyal, to be good employees, to stay for the long term. And it's why we've had the financial success in our company is because our people get engaged. Yes. So thank you very much for being here. Getting back down to the real nitty gritty, I've watched some of you beautiful women. I've watched all of you looking around here, and a lot of you are looking for husbands, and you're looking for the doctors and the lawyers and the folks with the shirt and tie acting important. Don't forget these truck drivers. <laughs> <laughs>